Good morning. Hey, everybody. I have like Command Central going on right here. Yep, I got Command Central going on, and I've accidentally hit Siri on my on 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 my iPad right over here. Oh wow! I don't know what to tell Siri to do. I don't need the map. Oh wow! Well. Exit Siri. Maybe I can swipe it to go away. Nope, that didn't work. I'm trying to get all technical here, and it's just not working. Tap to exit Siri. I just won't slack up. There we got it. Okay. Whew. Anyway, yesterday afternoon... Back to, I got sidetracked because I accidentally asked Siri to come on. I got to quit saying that word. Uh, yesterday, I, I well, a couple days ago, I ordered this wonderful little shelf. And it is just adorable because, um, you know, I keep digging in this box over here and I can't find anything. And I just wish I could show you this box. Maybe I, Maybe I can show you this shelf. It's our tools and my recording apparatus. Everything is just right here in my little studio chamber where I can reach for things and show you things and talk about things without having to dig down in a hole and you see in the top of my head. <laughs> so this morning I was putting on my makeup. Yes, I do need to put on a little bit of makeup. And I grabbed a brush to put on um, to put on my concealer because I have this nice little bisque flat um, um, mineral powder that covers up any little red blemishes on my face. Well, I reach for a brush and it's the one I used to use to do this. You know, habits are hard to break. Habits are really hard to break. So I reach for this brush and it's a red brush. And I started putting this powder on my face and my face just kept getting redder and redder and redder. And then I look down and I'm using this red brush, which is the brush I usually use for blush on my cheeks. Oh my goodness. I was putting red all over my face. Even though I was using the bisque powder, I was using putting red. And, and here's a secret I learned from Mary Kay many years ago. If you've got red spots, use a yellow tinted powder to negate those red spots. And then you can put your, uh, then you are a, a cream if you use a cream makeup, but use a yellow to negate the red. And then you put your foundation on. Well, my face is covered in red and it was all in the brush. So I think one of our, our pampering things we're going to have to do is wash our makeup brushes. <laughs> we should do that every three months anyway. So when the seasons change, let's, let's, um, let's wash our makeup brushes. And all you do is just put a little baby shampoo on them. Just a touch, not hardly any and wash them in warm water and set them up in a jar and let them dry or blow dry them either one i like to use um natural bristle brushes because it just i it works better for me anyway so here's to watching what brush you use because you could get glitter all over your face as somebody said and just laugh at what's going on. You know, don't blindly reach for a brush. Look and make sure, because I color coded my brushes. My red brush is for, for my blush. So folks, don't make the same mistake I did. Just don't do it. Don't do it. And I can't get my jacket 
Right. Anyway, that's my laugh for this morning. And, I, and I've been up half the night, just so you know. We had a little invader last night. And it was a bandit. And it had... It had um, a mask over its eyes, and it was this pesky raccoon, and the dogs had it cornered at the point of our deck. Our deck looks like the bow of a ship, and it was perched right there on the point of the deck, and they were yipping and yapping, and for two hours, finally, I went out there, and I... The raccoon had moved down below the deck, but you could still see its beady little eyes through the, through the rail. And so I moved my, one of my chairs at the point of the deck out toward it. Cause Tulip, she, she doesn't know any better. She's jumping up at it, trying to nip at it and it's spatting her. It never got, it never landed a bowl, a blow, but she was trying her best to get this thing. And finally, I moved the chair up close to it to keep the dogs away from her, from the raccoon. And the raccoon scampered away, and they went after it, but they they couldn't catch it. So we were we slept really late this morning, and I still have a makeup uh, a pillow mark on my face. <laughs> so I was trying to cover that up too. So. Here's to getting plenty of sleep, taking care of critters in the middle of the night, and coffee in the morning. Anyway, let me get that away. Scott Adams is tweeting up a storm. Don't need much to get that up. So does anybody have any questions? We're going to talk about saving money and I got sidetracked, but you know, not buying a lot of makeup saves you a lot of money when you don't need a lot. Let's use what we have. And I'm really liking my little studio set up here. You can't see any of it. I wish you could. Maybe, maybe you can. You want to see it? You want to see my little studio set up? I can reach and get the phone from this. And I think I can flip it around so you can see my little setup. Now, on the top shelf is our, our bumps and multi-wands and purple rags and rubber sweeper. And then on the second shelf is our calendar and my magic wand, my books, and our regular mop. And underneath the calendar is our office in a bags. And then on the bottom row, we have our carpet sweeper, our, our dish towels, and our all of my control journals, examples of control journals. And then we have our little declutter kit slash laundry hampers. And there is my iPad sitting there. And there's my stand to put my camera back on. So I feel like I am right uptown with all of this. Now let me see if I can get my camera back in its holder. And I'm gonna flip it back around. So see me. There we go. So this is a cute little little rolly cart I found on Amazon, of course. And it gave me the ability to be able to do all the things I need to do. What is I'm trying to oh, that's part of my phone. Goofy, goofy, goofy. Anyway, so saving money. Let's talk about saving money. You know, we've all heard about disposable income. Well, there is no disposable income. I'm just sorry. There's just not any. 
And at one o'clock today, you've got a great testimonial going out that was from about eight years ago. I did a search on um, saving money and, and some different things. And I found this testimonial and it was just phenomenal. Um, this, this lady had, had lived, she had a husband that really didn't care whether they ate or not. And she had a brand new baby and she was nursing the baby and they had no food in the house cause the husband evidently drank it up or some drank the money up or whatever. Well, she said she had had to eat a raw potato one time because she didn't have gas to cook with and she had to eat a raw potato, you know, because she was hungry and she's trying to nurse her baby. And she says it had the opposite effect on her that in or, instead of being saving, when she finally had a husband that took care of his family and had plenty of money, which, you know, being wasteful is never good, but she recognized her wastefulness because she was hoarding food. She had freezers that wouldn't hardly close. She had pantries that the do were, were stocked full and then she kept going to the grocery store every week and spending two to three hundred dollars. Now that's a lot of money for groceries every week. I mean, just two people. Robert's gone to the grocery store right now. Think about this. If you've got a pantry's full and no place to put things, maybe it's time we cooked out of our pantries and our freezers and let your your Goal this week has been to plan some menus from what's in your freezers. So she recognized that she was throwing a lot of stuff away. Things were getting freezer burn. Uh, she was she was just not feeling pr very good about herself and about the money she was wasting, and she she decided to start menu planning now. She had mocked the fact that we promote menu planning a lot. And she says, well, it just won't work for our family. Well, it doesn't work because you hadn't tried it. So she started menu planning and the first month, now this is eight years ago. The first month she saved four hundred and fifty dollars can you imagine what that would be in today's numbers probably closer to six hundred dollars that she saved think about it she started cooking from what she already had in the house and that's just brilliant just brilliant so the staying out of the grocery store now when justin was little we only had one car and every two weeks I would take Justin's dad to school and I would run errands on a Tuesday because Granny Elizabeth was off on Tuesday and she could keep Justin. And I would, I would run and get our groceries and everything we needed every two weeks on a Tuesday. And you had to have a grocery list and I had a, a perpetual menu that was made up for five weeks, five whole weeks. And in our control journals, we have uh, a, a way to build your menus and do all that, but you can do it a whole lot easier than even what's in our control journal. Sit down with some little cards and start taking inventory of what's in your refrigerator and in your freezer. I've got my inventory right here that Robert did for me the other day. And I know I have green beans. I know I have broccoli. I have spinach. I have chopped spinach. I have Brussels sprouts. I have peas. I have, uh, that's just on one shelf. I have a little box of 
T-bone steaks are not really good, so I would use them for stir fry. I have some fillets. I would use their little frozen that the man comes by in a with a freezer in the back of his truck and sells us this stuff. It's all organic, but it's pretty good stuff. But I need to use it up. So I have steak strips and garlic toast and potato soup that I've made in the past and frozen. And that's some really good stuff. If you just want a cup of soup for, for lunch, we have chicken breast. We have a whole drawer of different flavors of chicken breast that are vacuum sealed and they will keep a long time. So today's our day to clean out our refrigerator. And on on this day, I like to clean out and we're getting ready for the holiday. So we got to make room. So let's go through our little condiments that we have in the door of our of our refrigerator and those little bits of salad dressing you know even oil and vinegar dressing let's let's just clean all those bottles and jars out of our out of the door of our refrigerators to make room for the holidays and all the th things that we have to do and just start opening up and rinsing them out and putting it in your crock pot. Little bits of barbecue sauce, little bits of teriyaki sauce, little bits of um, garlic sauce that you get from the pizza place, little bits of salad dressing that's blue cheese, ranch dressing, just start dumping it all in your crock pot. And this is going to be Surprise, even little bits of jams and jellies. Let's clean it all out and make room in our door for the holidays. Now, and then take some chicken thighs. Some You need to thaw them up before you put them in your crock pot. But take some chicken thighs and some chicken breasts and pieces of chicken and throw them in the crock pot with it. Thaw it up. And put it on low and cook it the rest of the day. And your house is going to smell so good and you're not going to know what's in there. And sometimes you can throw some frozen broccoli in there and mix it up. Um, I, I, last time I did it, I, I, I pulled the chicken all apart and served it over wide noodles. You can serve it over... Uh, you can add a little bit of cheese to it if you want a little cheesy sauce to it. So there's no recipe. It's just clean out your refrigerator. It's surprise chicken. I might ought to try to do it with beef sometime. That might be fun. How long do you freeze raw chicken? I would say you, you go on the Farmer's Almanac website and you can do a search or even on the government website, the USDA website, and you can do a search on how long to uh, you can freeze chicken. If it's vacuum sealed, you can seal it probably twice as long as it's you can you can keep it in the freezer twice as long. But start let's start using that up. Now some of your things that are freezer burned. Here here's what I would do with some of the stuff the meats and things that are freezer burned. I would put them I would thaw them up and put them in your crock pot and just start making broth out of it if you're scared of it but you can cook it and cook it for two or three days in your crock pot and you can you can make a wonderful broth out of it and it's and you can't you know after you cook it for two or three days you don't feed it to your dogs or anything you just need to throw it away so let's get our let's get our freezers cleaned out and Let's start cooking what we've already paid money for. What a great way to save. Let's cook what... Well. Now, if you will look through your freezer as you're cleaning it out and sort it really fast, put on some winter gloves and just start pulling things out of your freezer and pile up all the, all the ground beef and all the hamburger meat and all, you know, all the pork and all the beef products and sort them out. And then all your hamburger meat, you can pre-cook most of it. I wouldn't put it in there frozen, but stick it in your refrigerator because your refrigerator's clean and you got room for it and let it thaw up and then put it all in your crock pot 
and I show you how to do it. I got a little video on our YouTube page on how to cook hamburger meat in your crock pot. Cut up two or three onions with it. Uh, you know, according I use six pounds of of um, six pounds of ground beef with three onions and two cups of water. It's a proportional recipe. Six three two. And then once it cooks after about three four hours and you're stirring it every 15 minutes, wow. You got cooked hamburger meat. Then bag it back up after it's cooled into two cup portions. Sometimes you might not need to use more than two cups, but you get the picture? You've got pre-cooked hamburger meat. It's like having hamburger helper ready to go. And there's lots of ways to use that hamburger meat. So how many ways can you think to use hamburger meat? Tacos, casseroles, um, sloppy joes. Oh, that sounds so good, sloppy joes. Just think about it. And if you've got some, some steaks and things in your freezer that you might think are a little freezer burn, thaw them up and you can put them in your food processor. And to make little chunks, you can make ro you can make stew out of. Just think of what you got. You have got a a bounty of food in your freezer, but you don't you don't know what's there, and you're scared to look. So yesterday, I was at my daughter in law's. We went to dinner with them last night, and she was telling me about this man that came to work on her refrigerator. And he was really hateful to her. And it made me so mad. It made me so mad that I, I, I need to tell y'all about this. If somebody comes into your house to work on an appliance and you're going to be paying them, they need to treat you with respect. If they treat you as if you are a child, you need to order them out of your house immediately. You can always find somebody else. Do not allow anybody to disrespect you in your own home. Now, as we were talking about this, we've got a refrigerator that needs worked on. And now this is really funny, and I would only do this where we live. I probably wouldn't do it anywhere else. But... Mr. Mann called, and that's his last name, Mann, and he's the sweetest man, and I've never met him. I've only talked to him on the phone, but he's a good old country boy, and he calls when he's got a few minutes just after he's, he works up at Lake Toxaway, which is a, a 45 minutes from here, and he said, you know, I got a few minutes. Can I come by and check your refrigerator? I said, we're not home. I said, but guess what? The back door is open because we had left the back door open for the dogs. And I told him how to get through the fence and to love up the dogs that they wouldn't eat him up. And he fixed our refrigerator and left us a bill. <laughs> how cool is that? It was a broken wire. Now, how a wire got broke, we don't know. What is Sloppy Joe's? Sloppy Joe's is... um. Is hamburger meat with ketchup and stuff in it that you put on a bun and it's all mixed up and you you put some onion in it and some ketchup and and then it, it's sloppy when you eat it that's how it gets its name I think there's a recipe on our website for Kathy's sloppy joes which is so she cooks it in a crock pot it's amazing Okay, let's see if we got any questions here. Well, that's my uh, apply. I, when when Mr. Mann called, I said, uh, "Were your ears burning?" He said, "Why were you?" T I, I said, "Speak of the devil," and he said, "Devil." <laughs> and I said, "We were just talking about my daughter-in-law's appliance repairman, and you call." And it, I thought well, it was quite funny. But our refrigerator is fixed, and Robert is so happy because now we have crushed ice again. And he is 
he's just beside himself. He loves crushed ice and lime water, ice water with lime in it. And that's how he gets his vitamin C. Oh, sloppy Joe sound real good. I must be hungry. I haven't had any breakfast this morning. Anyway, so somebody asked the question, what is the best way to clean the tub? Well, the best way to clean the tub is to have somebody else do it, especially little kids while they're in it. Now you ask me, how does that, how does that work? Well, here, here you go. You take a purple rag and you keep it in the tub and then you put a little bit of the bath soap you use on the kids on, on uh, the, the rag and you let them clean the edges of the tub while they're in it. The best way to clean the tub is while you're in it. No bending, just wipe down the sides while the water's going out and then lay your washcloth up to dry and then put it in the dirty clothes the next morning. That's the best way to clean the tub. Uh, let's see. And purple rags right now are half price. You get three rags for $7.47. That's a great deal. Our, oh, look here, I'm using my little little table. I'm, I'm so happy over this little table. I got two of them, but I don't know where I would put two of them and why I would need two of them. But our mops are half price, our extra large mops. And then our multi wands, these things are such a good price. And they make a, a, they keep you from having to climb because they fit on, on our mop handle. They just go right on our mop handle. You unscrew this part right here and it screws right up in there. Uh, let's see. Lost the mop. No, I didn't. It's right here. But I did lose it. I don't know how to do this. But I will figure it out. I don't want it covering up the book. So multi wands are, you can use the coupon code and the coupon code is a good coupon code this week. Blessing954. I love it because that's what we do with our house. We bless our home when we take care of it. Now, rubber scrubbers are on a bogo. So if you put one in your cart, you're going to get two. And I use this thing for everything. So this morning I'm making up the bed and the little dog has been on, on our, on my bedspread. So I need to take my bedspread and take the rub scrubber to my bedspread because she comes in dirty and it gets grit on the bedspread. Now it gets folded down so it's not in my bed, but I love this thing for getting rid of sand out of out of the from from the puppy. She is a mess. Now back to menu planning. Menu planning is real easy when you use a calendar. And get some post notes. Get some little post notes. Let me see if I have any right here. Yep, I do. The little post notes. Just cut the sticky part off. And we'll show you right quick. Cut the sticky part off, and then you can just place it. Let me see if I can do it for you. right there. Now that's the whole post-it note. But if you just cut the sticky part off, you can write your entree on that. Now if you fold it up, you could probably put other things on there so that you can just move it to the next week or two weeks down the road so you're not doing the same thing, you're cooking the same thing every week. 
but just cut this top sticky part off. I'm going to tear it right now because I don't have scissors right here. And you have a little piece. So folks, mini planning with post-it notes is a great way to do it. And it works because you can reuse them. Now, write down as many things as you cook with hamburger meat. Just, just brainstorm. How, what all you cook with hamburger? I've got an essay about it, and I'm going to find it and send it out later this week. But write down as many things as you cook with hamburger meat, as many things as you cook with beef, just hunks of beef. My daughter-in-law was telling me last night, she, her neighbor brought her a bunch of peppers and she was going to do pepper steak. Oh, that sounds so good. Just, she cut up a bunch of peppers and cut up a steak. And so, so one steak will feed the whole family when you mix things with it and serve it over rice. Yum. And she likes to use cauliflower rice. So they're doing low carb stuff. Think of all the things you cook with beef and ground beef because anything you have beef in your refrigerator you can turn to ground beef if you don't want to cook it whole with with a little food processor or just chopping it up into pieces and making making soup out of it so think about the things that you have in your refrigerator that you need to cook right now and then also think about leftovers you have in your refrigerator that aren't too old that you can throw together and make a soup out of just put it all in a crock pot, add some mixed vegetables to it, a can of tomatoes, and chop up the meat, and you got a great soup. And serve it with a grilled cheese sandwich. Yum. So folks, let's let's eat out of our freezers, out of our pantries. I would have put on a pot of pinto beans. There, I dropped the, the mop. I'm going to put on a pot of pinto beans in a little bit because this week, later on in the week, I want to make um, some taco casseroles. Yum. I got the hamburger meat. I'll have some pinto beans. It's all good. It's all good. So... Let's cook what we have. Let's plan on making some broth out of the things we're not really sure we should eat, you know, not really sure it's, you know, freezer burned and stuff. And let's use what we've already purchased. You've probably got a fortune of food in your pantry, in your freezer, that you just, it's too much to deal with. But if you'll just take it out of your freezer, put it in a pan so it doesn't leak all over everything, and let it thaw up, then you can process it. You can process it. But you gotta know what you got, what you've got. You gotta have an inventory. And then just deal with it. And you are, just plan some menus around it. You bought it planning on to doing something with it. Think about that and let's do it. You know, if you've got a garden, then what vegetables are coming? If you've got zucchinis and different things coming in. Let's cook out of our gardens, out of our pantries, out of our, uh, I was trying to think a recipe that Emily was talking about. She made a pumpkin soup the other day. Yum. So folks, save some money by, by, using what you got let's use what we've got and you're gonna you're gonna save money to be able to purchase the christmas presents and different things you need i want to help you i want to help you not have to run up your credit cards to have christmas and the only disposable income we got is our grocery money and when we use it wisely, we can save a lot of money. Okay, everybody, let's see. What about getting someone else motivated to clean? Well, you all you 
really do is make a game out of it, you know? All you can really do is make a game out of it for the kids. That's all you can do. And you can motivate the kids, but you, you, you got to do it yourself. You got to take care of it yourself. You just have to. And if you've never made a menu, I want you to sit down, and this is a good memory lesson for you. Sit down with a piece of paper and or your calendar and post-it notes and write down what you've had to eat for the last week. Think about it. Last night we, we had seafood and we, we went to this restaurant and I had mussels. I love mussels. I don't have them at home because I can't cook them. I could, but I don't know where to buy them around here. But we had, Robert had shrimp, so I could put shrimp down on my list because I got shrimp in my freezer, ready to go. So I could make some shrimp jambalaya. I could do lots of things. It's all about thinking ahead and thinking back a little bit, making your menu plan. And come up with a basic plan for your menu. Maybe you want to cook a big, big dinner on Sundays. And then you want to have leftovers on Wednesdays. So you got Monday and Tuesday. You could have a meatless Monday, a taco Tuesday, leftovers on Wednesday that you're either going to make a soup or do surprise chicken. Thursday, you can put something else in the crock pot. Maybe you're going to have spaghetti on Thursday. Friday could always be pizza. And you can make your own pizzas easily. There's some great recipes for for dough from Bobby Flay online. And then Saturday could be soup and sandwiches. Or th think of a basic weekly plan. And t Taco Tuesday, Thursday, think of, just come up with a way. You're creative. Maybe you have uh, Mondays is Mexican, Tuesdays is... Um, American food. Wednesdays is leftovers. Thursdays is Chinese. Maybe you do a stir fry. Maybe Saturday's a casserole you throw together. And see? Italian, Mexican, Chinese, American. That's four different days there. You can have comfort food, which could be a pot roast with potatoes and carrots and all kinds of good stuff. That's five days. And you got leftovers from, from the comfort food to build sandwiches and stuff out of. I plan for leftovers. I like leftovers. We have chi chili in the refrigerator right now. I'm probably going to bag it up and freeze some of it, but I might make a, a chili pot pie with lots of cheese and tortillas and <clears throat> yum. So folks, think about what you've got in your refrigerator. Let's clean it out so we make room, do surprise chicken or throw together a soup, and let's have some fun. At, like somebody said, a huge, huge salad and you got it made. And if you don't eat a lot of meat, just deal with the veggies. I like to have a good supply of veggies in my freezer too. So folks, let's have a good day. I got stuff to do. You got stuff to do. And I will see you tomorrow. I love you all. Bye.